Hey everybody, it's break here. And the from rolling D50. Today's video is going to be on how to take the keypad out of D50 and how to clean the sensors that are under there that usually cause the velocity sensitivity problem. Uh, a lot of times the D50 is real sensitive to dust or any kind of particles or anything that gets underneath the keys um, from inside, so, and, and the outside as well. Um, so that usually causes a little bit of an issue, so I'm going to go ahead and take this apart and show a very simple solution to uh, fixing that problem. Uh, somehow it can be a temporary fix because my D50 has had this problem several times uh, since I've owned it, but it's just a simple cleaning and usually that fixes the problem for a little while. So, I usually have to clean this and do the same thing probably like once every couple years or so. So, it's just something that happens with synthesizers uh, often, but it's not difficult to fix at all. So what I have here, um, I'm already taking the back of D50 off. Um, after we get started, I'll show how that thing set up too. Um, I don't really have a little uh, tray kind of thing here. This is actually a lid to a box, and I keep all my supplies in it. It's easier to find everything and uh, keep everything organized if you have something to put it in. So I have uh, a couple of screwdrivers here, a few uh, paintbrushes. Uh, they don't have anything on them. Uh, I just use the dry paintbrushes to dust the circuit boards off and clean it underneath the keys. And I have some uh, key tips here. Uh, to put some alcohol on to clean the keys and underneath them. And then a little, another separate uh, little tray thing to put these screws on uh, so I don't lose them. So it's always a good idea to organize things that way. Also you'll need to remove the slider caps uh, from the volume uh, switch on D50 as well. Okay. So once everything's organized, it makes life a little easier. Also use 70% uh, uh, alcoholic, medical alcohol, you can find it at a pharmacy. I use that. Uh, no water, just alcohol. And I use alcohol because it's actually safe to use on circuit boards, and there's no water in it uh, that's going to damage the circuit board itself, and it dries very quickly. Okay. Alright, once you got that set up, have a little music going on in the background there. <laughs> um, we'll get started. So, the circuit board I've already um, un un uh, connected the connectors here. Or disconnected them uh, and taking all the screws off the main board. So once you do that, it's pretty easy to pick up the circuit board itself. This is what it looks like. Not close. Not sure how well you can see that, but this is the main board for D50. Okay, and the battery is up here at the top. Okay. Now I'm gonna set this on a safe spot so nothing happens to it and the static gets to it. Alright, uh, this main uh, board here, this uh, scanner board can stay on, you don't need to remove that at all. Uh, there's several screws that will connect the keyboard to the actual inside chassis of the D50. Uh, they're all back here. One by the, the power supply, so be careful not to drop the screw in there. And back here. And also this uh, ribbon connector here that deals with the velocity uh, information of the keys um, also needs to be unplugged. So you just gently pull that out. Alright. And the keypad will slide out. And then you can pick up the whole thing. Okay. I'm going to move the rest of the D50 back. A little bit of synthesizer sound back there. Okay. Alright, so here is the keypad. There's the scanner board here. The resistor that divides the voltages here, here at the front of it. It's actually quite heavy because the frame that it's on is quite heavy. Very well made. Okay, there's also these plastic little tabs here. I've actually taped these on uh, because mine, the glue is so old on this it won't stay. So, let me try to show you. Right here. I'm not sure if you can see this, but it's a plastic. Uh, kind of film thing. It's really pretty thick so it won't bend uh, terribly easily. I'll also be careful not to break it though. Um, but yeah, so these need to come off so that you can actually get the keys to disconnect there. Mine are actually taped on since the glue isn't any good anymore. So I just kind of flip them backwards. And the tape actually will hold them there. Like that. Okay. So then when it comes to removing this, I don't have to take the little tabs out and Worth losing them and everything. Um, I have numbered these for when I did take them out. So each one is numbered with a uh, sharpie. 
So it's all good to have a decent sized Sharpie so you can write the numbers on. Um, you don't have to do it that way, but that's just a helpful way that I've found to mark things. Okay. I'm going to turn this over and have it to where the keys are facing away from me. There are springs here. Not sure how well you can hear that. They actually have a pitch to them. Let me turn the radio off. Kind of interesting. Another instrument in there. Okay. Got other music. Okay, so what I'm going to do is have a place to put the spring. And you are pretty easy enough to just pull these. Uh, by pinching them and kind of pulling up on them, but make sure you don't let them go flying everywhere. So I'm going to take that off. Get the other one up. And I'll probably take just a few keys off. You can obviously take the whole key bed off. I'll probably just take about, uh, let's see, probably about four white keys and, uh, yeah, three black keys. I'll just take that off. Um, also, not sure how well you can see this on here, but the springs are actually two different sizes. If you get them mixed up, uh, the longer springs, if you put those on the black keys and the short ones on the white keys, then it'll pull the white keys up too far, so then you'll have this kind of thing going on here. Um, there's also a way to adjust this. It can be either spring being placed wrong, or uh, the little metal uh, tab that's under here, and I can show you how uh, to look at that and make sure that it's lined up. Okay, so here are the springs, and they're very slightly different sizes, but the longer ones will need to go on the black keys, I mean on the white keys, and the short ones on the black keys, since the black keys have uh, a smaller amount of space to go, as far as being connected there. Okay, so those are the springs. Put those in a safe place, so they don't get lost anywhere. And to take the keys off, um, now that these are pretty loose, and there's no spring keeping them down. We're gonna actually just push forward on the back side. And push them away from you. And they'll all kind of pop up like that at once. Okay? So we have that done. We can very gently grab them from the bottom and pull them up. Get several. You can either keep them in order to make a reassembly a little easier. However you like to do that. So I have these set over here as if they were in D50. These also have the little lead weights on them to keep them in there. Okay, so now we have these paper tabs that I'm assuming they're just to keep dust out even though they don't seem to work too well and D50 has a little dust issue. I'll take a few more keys off so I can show that a little easier. Okay, so here's the, the uh, weights here. It doesn't make the keys way much uh, when you're playing it, but it does make for a nicer key action instead of the really, really lightweight ones. Okay. So here's the metal tabs. I mean, the uh, plastic tabs. The plastic papers, I think. And what I normally do is I'll take a paintbrush like this, the decent weight to it, and I should keep the paper tab from flipping over while I'm working on it. Then just set the paintbrush in it and put the, t uh, the paper tabs over so I don't have to worry about it getting in the way. Okay. And then uh, actually before we pull that these uh, contact strips up I'm going to give it a quick cleaning. So the any dust that's on top of this, which there's going to be some dust that settles in these little holes here uh, so that once I do pull that up, it won't get right onto the sensor where I don't need it to be. So, I'm going to carefully pull this up without ripping it, because it is a rubber material and it's kind of old, so it's not exactly the strongest material. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Okay. Use another paintbrush here to keep that from falling. 
So now we have access to the actual circuit board itself and the velocity sensitive uh, little printed out connectors here. And what I normally do, I guess a couple of Q tips, hot swallows, whatever you call them. And I usually have one that has the alcohol solution on it, and another one that has both ends of dry. And go in here. And just give it a good cleaning with the alcohol. Make sure that you cover every area. The alcohol will not hurt the circuit board either. It's better to use alcohol because it dries very quick. Also clean this copper uh, area there. Just to make sure that all the dust and everything that shouldn't be there is gone. Okay. Once you do that, go over it again with the dry Q-tip. Make sure that everything's dry. Okay, and it's very dry. And what I normally do is I'll go over this again with the paintbrush. Make sure that all the dust is really out of there. Make sure it's not a good clean circuit board. Okay, and now it's going to be clean and free of dust, and any little issues that are going to give it the velocity problem should be off of there. And it only works for my D50. Hopefully that helps. And then uh, when we're setting this back down, um, there's these bigger parts of the material that need to fit into the bigger holes. So it's easier just to put the bigger tabs in their holes first, and then the small ones can follow after that. But since it's such a soft material, it's kind of difficult to get it to cooperate with you there. But a little patience, it'll work. Maybe carefully do each one of those. Set that back in place. Okay. And then we'll set the small ones back in place. So this will keep the sensors nice and clean for a little while. My DP has had to have this kind of cleaning a few times since I've had it. That is not too, uh, not too painful. Okay, so now all the bigger tabs are in there. I'm gonna go back over this and get all the small ones. So the little rubber contact switches and fit back in their places. <coughs> okay, so now once it's all done, and double check and make sure that all of these are actually set in the little holes. It should be good to go. So that nothing should get caught and it shouldn't come up uh, underneath the keys or anything. I'm gonna get one more cleaning. And also this uh, felt material here can get pretty dusty and can have a lot of stuff in it. So it's good to clean that too so that once we do put this back together it's not gonna have all the dust and everything else that we don't need. Okay, now we have a fresh clean circuit board. I also like to clean these paper tabs as well, give them a dusting. Kind of give a dusting going this way. And then they'll fit over their respective key places pretty nicely there. The unusual key design, but it has how Roland set that up there. Okay, so to set the keys back in place, go ahead and Oh, this right here, before I forget, which I forgot, that I'll show you now. These are the uh, the bushings that come underneath the keys. This is actually what keeps the keys lined up. Let's see how well we can tell what's there. Right here. Uh, these little plastic, uh, I guess, they, they, they just kind of wrap around here, but they're plastic. And you can actually slide those off, and you can actually line those up. I use uh, a ruler to make sure this is lined up and you use a pair of pliers. And you can bend these little tabs down or up very, very, very carefully to line the keys up. So I've actually aligned all these keys on D50 so that they are nice and level. So these shouldn't be bent down at all. If they are just from age or knocking into something, um, you can just bend those pretty easily with pliers. But just be very careful because they can break. Um, 
but yeah, those are not too difficult to align either. Okay. Although they're in pretty good shape still. This is the felt underneath the, the key stop. And the circuit board and the paper. That's where the springs are going to be. I'm going to go ahead and put the keys back in the places. Okay. And a good thing to do is to put the black keys in. Put those in first. So we actually just get the there's a little hole here in the bottom of the black key. And that's where the bushing will go into. So that little middle prong here, this sticking out for each key, will go in there. And then you set it back in its place. Okay. So we have, so we have two black keys here. I know that there needs to be three. So every other one will be a black key. Put that on the little metal tab. And kind of put pressure on it in the front to bring it back to where it should be for the springs. And then we set our keys back in place, our white keys. Alright. Put that in there. Okay. And they'll, they'll set back in place, but they obviously are not going to be held by the springs, so. I'm going to make a little trigger. It's tricky to not uh, knock into them and knock them out of place, but not too bad. Okay. There we go. Alright. And one last key. This one's a little bit trickier because it's got a bigger metal tab to go through. Okay, so now we have all the keys set up there. And turn the radio down. Alright. And then we can actually go through the process of putting the springs back on. Which is simple. Make sure that we have the right size. So right here I've got two longer screws and two small ones. The longer ones to go for the light keys. And it's a good idea to keep your finger on the loophole spring that's on the light key, or on the key itself, so that when you let it go, to get on the tab, there we go, that it won't go flying off somewhere into space. <laughs> Okay. Alrighty then. So once you get all the springs put back on and put the bitty back together, the problem should be resolved. Uh, just the, the simple alcohol procedure here. Uh, like I said before, it's not a permanent fix, but it's the easiest to do for now. And just try to keep as much dust off your hands as possible, even though they do collect a lot of dust. Okay. So now these keys will be uh, perfectly lined up again. And uh, it's a good idea to make sure that they're lined up uh, as far as the uh, metal prongs that are under here. So anyway, once you get those all put back together, they'll be fully functioning again. Then you can actually flip this over and set this back into the rest of D50, and it should be good to go. Okay, thanks for watching, and hope this helps.